My name is Nathan, and I'm the cellist of our group. <laughs> and uh, it sounds very beautiful. Uh, it sounds really great. Um, since this is a Handel sonata, everything I feel like I should speak because everything comes from the bass line, um, from the cello part in this instance. And we're playing on the cello. It sounds very good, and the ensemble is very good, but we can have, I think, more motion in the phrases. And most of it comes from the harmony, from the bass here, and I think we can bring that in even more, and then the violin parts can follow that motion. So we need to find where the phrase is going. And I think you can really help us find where the phrase is. So for the first the first phrase, where where does it go? <laughs> of the, the large one. So it's four bars, yeah? So one unit to here. So if we can make it go all the way to here. And then, so you two playing it can help the phrase go all the way. Can you play it? So here, just keep all the way, keep going. And then again, when the second violin comes in with the melody, it keeps going again for another four bars, and then it starts to keep building. Can you do it again and keep, keep going? I'll try to show where to go.
So when you keep the music moving, then it makes more sense all together. Si vous continuez à faire avancer la musique, alors ça a plus de sens. It sounds even even better now. It fits together. It sounds very beautiful. Does anyone else have anything to say? <coughs> <laughs> so you guys can see each other, right? I was wondering, I feel like the way the group is oriented, I feel like your stands are maybe a little bit high. Lower maybe, 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 a little, maybe a little bit lower so you can see each other and make sure you're communicating not only with your ears, but also with your eyes. <laughs> You guys play really beautifully. Um, something that I think would help is if, okay, so we have cello, violin one, violin two, right? So it doesn't mean that, you know, first violin is always the melody, and you know, you play a big solo part, and second violin, yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> For friends. Um, so both of you have to know when your part is the important one, the more prominent one. So when you have the melody, so I mean, in the first section, the largo. Um, so, so we start with the first part, right? In the first phrase. So that is the main melody for that section, and then the and then second part takes over after that. So can we try can we try again from the top and just keep that in mind? And so um, when she has the melody, then first violin, yeah. You know, back off a little bit. I mean I don't mean you have to step back. <laughs> <laughs> Dynamically. Just be a little more aware. So and then play. Okay, let's try. Um, that's, that's already better. I mean, it's a lot clearer. Um, and something that might help is if you might want to try playing this a little further up in the bow, a little higher. Oh no, lower in the bow. I mean. <laughs> that way, that way. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, in the little, in the little bits of the phrase, like measure by measure. Um, can you play just uh, by yourself, maybe, once? Good. Um, where is your destination in that? <laughs> Very well. Okay. Good. Yeah, to the C, right? So, those, um, yeah. So, let's try to have a little bit more direction to the C. Sorry. Not quite yeah, let's try. Beautiful, beautiful. So maybe you could try even changing the first bar and the second bar. You know, so like, because um, like the first measure you feel like it's going somewhere, and the second measure you're coming back. A bit. So let's try that. Yeah? Um, maybe there we go.
C'est que dans la musique baroque, le grand truc, c'est les suspensions. And you can really uh, make the most of it by bringing them out. So every time you guys say, um, when you play like a second or when you hear that it's passion, and really bring it out, and it can make it a, a lot more interesting. Il faut que quand vous entendez les suspensions dans la musique, que vous les mettez en valeur. For instance, in by age. So at the end of the note here, your note flashes the third. And um when you hear that your note is um, like one of the more composers, it's just bring it out is actually fun. Thank you for joining me. Actually, can you probably just start from the six maybe? I think it can have more emotion in life, even in the articulation. It might be easier if I just show you. Okay? You should feel that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's sounding. So if we can have more lift, lightness, it might be easier, a little lower in the bow. Sixteenth notes, if you can shape them with the phrase. So you get and to feel that the phrase goes. And I wanted to ask you, what do you think is the character or mood of the Allegro? Um, elle vous demande quel, qu'est-ce que vous croyez que c'est, enfin, 
Quel est le caractère de ce morceau Il peut être quelque chose, il n'y a pas de bonne réponse ou de mauvaise réponse. Il n'y a pas de bonne réponse ou de mauvaise réponse. Well, basically, what do you think Allegro means? What does Allegro mean? Does Allegro mean? Uh, what do you think of when you hear it when you play it? Quand vous jouez, qu'est-ce que ça signifie pour vous? Qu'est-ce que à quoi vous pensez? Don't answer all at once. For instance, when I hear it, I think a lot about it's, it's really light. It reminds me of dancing, maybe. It reminds me of. Pour elle, quand elle joue en allegro, c'est très, c'est très léger. Ça lui rappelle à la danse classique et la suite. So that's one thing you can possibly think of, or, or try to create the sound of when you're playing the, the allegro. Um, I know for us, it's really helpful when we talk about characters or moods um, as we rehearse something, so that it's a unified, a group idea. Pour eux, ils répètent beaucoup pour que pour que le caractère de la pièce soit ensemble, que ça soit le même caractère pour tout le monde. Yeah. So the first time we played the allegro section. Um, it was a little bit like, you know, I'm taking a nice stroll in the park. But it's not quite that. That would be andante. So allegro is kind of like, oh, oh, I'm going somewhere. You know? So it has to have a little bit more um, activity. Because for me, allegro means lively. So. Maybe, maybe we could try that? Oh, sorry. Three. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe we could try that, you yeah? know, with a bit more lift.
pas arrêté, et, mais je, je peux dire que ça sonne très bien maintenant parce que vous ne faites plus que, que, que jouer seulement ensemble. Et mes collègues, mes collègues je crois que le, le, summary, le, 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 résumé. le résumé de tout ça, c'est de faire direction, ça veut dire à Chandrando ou Ritavando. Direction, ça veut dire dynamique. Dynamique. Handel, il n'a rien écrit. Ça ne veut pas dire qu'on qu ne fait rien. <rire> on fait beaucoup. Faire personnaliser les dynamiques, la direction. Vous êtes très libre de faire beaucoup plus que vous faites. Et maintenant, ça, ça sent très bien. Alors, ajoutez vous, euh, votre personnalité tout le temps. In the way that they say. <laughs> <laughs>